When it comes to rubber legs for patterns, I use two major categories. Uh, there's the perfectly round rubber that comes in solid and barred colors. And then there's the spandex floss material. Uh, the big difference when we look at the two is pretty straightforward. It's mostly in the name. So the round rubber is, as it says, nice and round. Uh, the spandex flosses are a little bit more textured and they actually are, are flat, a little bit stretchier too. So regardless of what you're working with, there are a few techniques that you can use uh, to help you as you go to create different patterns. So there are several nymph patterns out there that use rubber legs material uh, in the tail. Anytime I'm tanning a tail with rubber leg material, I like to take that material and just straddle it over the thread and pull it down. This allows me to slide this right down to the tie-in point. Once I take one good firm wrap around the hook shank, that material is locked and in place. And then what I prefer to do is very simply apply a little bit of pressure and you can see the hook shank kind of peek through those two strands of legs as it straddles. And all I need to do after that is stick the nose of my bobbin in there and very simply just walk that back. And that's going to lock those in uh, right where they need to be for my tail. They're nicely splayed on each side of the hook and set up and ready to go. So for a Pat's rubber legs, for example, big stone fly uh, with the rubber tail, that's a great way to tie in the tail. If we come forward on this, uh, for that same pattern, I reference it because it's a very common pattern. Uh, they use a, a technique where they're, they come in with X or crisscross wraps over the top of the rubber leg. And so for that, once again, I'm going to straddle this. And I'm going to pull it right down on top of the shank where I want it. I'm going to take one solid firm wrap and I'm going to let it go. And then from there I can manipulate it. I'm going to come over the leg from this direction. I'm going to pull this one back. Come over it from the front side. Come over it from the back side. And as you can see, if you think about the letter X, I'm just laying down crisscross wraps. But once again, straddling that over the thread makes it really easy to slide into the tie-in point. Uh, there are other patterns. One of them that follows a little further down this feed, uh, named the Tequili, where you have pairs of legs that shoot out from the side. Uh, and it's the same exact concept. I'm going to take that rubber leg material, I'm going to straddle it over the thread, I'm going to slide it down to the side where I want it, get one nice firm wrap on it. This time, though, I want those to stay on the side, and I do want them to taper back. So I'm actually going to catch the front of this with a wrap or two. And that's going to hold that in place. It's going to hold it on the side of the shank this time. And that's going to cause both of those legs to taper to the rear the way that I want them tied in. Regardless of how you use it, just remember that that technique of taking those rubber legs, tapering them over the thread, sliding into your tying point, getting one solid secure wrap is extremely beneficial when working with rubber legs. It's going to make them a lot easier to manage for you regardless of what pattern you're tying.